Hi, my name is Scott Lewins. I'm an entomologist with University of Vermont Extension. Uh, we're scouting a hop yard today. Here with me is Savannah Cattell Mitchell uh, to show us how to scout the hop yard. Um, so what we're going to do is come over to this hop vine. Um, we are going to uh, choose three leaves per vine um, and we're going to count up all of the insects that we find on the vine. So, Savannah, please show us how it's done. So we're going to start by looking up the top side of the leaf and then flip it over. And we're looking for any type of insect. And so right now I'm seeing a lot of dead spider mites, but we're only looking for live things. And Right here. What do you think that is, Scott? Oh, that looks like a leaf hopper, potato leaf hopper. So what we have here is the classic hopper burn. It's damage to the hop leaf from hopper, potato leaf hopper feeding. Uh, you can see the yellowing on the leaf margin, uh, as well as the brown curling up. Uh, that's due to uh, severe hopper burn. Now, as we can see, there's hopper burn on this leaf, but would we use chemical intervention on this plant? We base our decisions on a two leaf hopper per leaf average. So um, what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll scout multiple plants and then average up the number of leaf hoppers per leaf. Uh, and if that is above an average of two leaf hoppers per leaf, um, we may uh, choose to use a chemical intervention. Um, but you'll notice this is older growth, and if we look at some of the new growth, uh, we don't see uh, the hopper burn on the new growth. So if it's close to that two leaf hopper per leaf threshold, uh, we may not spray anything if we see happy and healthy leaves uh, on the new growth. So you keep talking about threshold, mm -hmm. but what does economic threshold mean? Yeah, so we can have a, you know, a baseline amount of insects in the hop yard, and that's a good thing. Um, just because there are insects, even bad insects like potato leaf hoppers, doesn't mean that we're going to um, suffer from any economic loss. Mm -hmm. um, so the leaf hoppers are feeding on leaves, but what we're harvesting here are uh, mature cones. So as long as you have healthy growth uh, on the new growth and you've got burr formation um, and your cone yields are uh, high enough, you can, you can um, have an acceptable amount of damage on the leaf and not uh, suffer any economic losses. Um, so we don't want to spray at the first sight uh, of an insect. Um, it's only when we're above the level uh, at which we're going to um, suffer economic loss that we um, would take a chemical intervention. So that's where our thresholds are based on. Okay, so we know that chemical intervention isn't always the best choice, but what about biological intervention mm -hmm. or other alternatives to chemical? Yeah, there are alternatives to, to chemical interventions. Um, people can release uh, biological control agents. Um, often in a large field setting, you can get challenging if you mm -hmm. release a biological control agent. Um, there's nothing preventing them from leaving the hop yard and going someplace else. So if you choose a biological control agent, you want to choose something that's a specialized feeder mm -hmm. um, on the pest that you have a problem with. Um, there are wasps that specialize on aphids, for instance, um, but a generalist feeder like a ladybug mm -hmm. um, would very quickly leave the hop yard and go feed someplace else because they can feed on a wide variety of pests, not just uh, a pest in a hop yard. Okay. So you want to be careful in choosing your biological control agent if you choose to release one. Okay. So what we've got here is a spider that has built its web uh, in our hop yard. Uh, all spiders are beneficial. They're all predators. They're feeding on uh, insects that are potentially pests. Um, so you want to be mindful not only of the pests in your hop yard, but also all of the beneficial, both predators and parasitoids that are feeding on your pests. 
Another concern uh, with releasing biological control agents is if you choose to use a chemical intervention later on, um, you may wind up then killing the stuff that you just released. Um, so you want to time any releases uh, to when you might potentially be spraying as well. Are there any theories about um, trap crops or using a another crop to enhance your like, generalist predators in your hop yard? Mm -hmm. So we have some research going on uh, with a graduate student now looking at um, the way that we treat our drive rows. Right now we just have grass uh, in between our uh, rows, but she's looking at different types of flowering plants and maybe you can enhance the natural uh, natural enemies that way. Um, I've read before that geraniums are mm -hmm. effective um, at helping to control Japanese beetles, uh, although um, there's not a lot of literature on that. So another one of the um, pests that we're finding in fairly high numbers in our hop yard is two-spotted spider mites. Um, they're related to spiders, um, but much, much smaller. Um, you find them on the underside of the leaf and they cause a webbing on the underside of the leaf. Uh, from the top of the leaf you see this characteristic damage. This is a severely damaged leaf um, and this one here uh, is, has the beginnings of spider mite damage. You see that characteristic stippling uh, and discoloration and then eventually you get um, death of the leaf uh, in severe cases. All right, Scott, so we've talked about some disease and some pest issues. Can we go over some scouting procedures? Sure. What we do is we recommend if you're small scale under an acre, you want to um, look at about 10% of your plants. Uh, for larger uh, growers, um, you know, maybe about one every 25 plants. Mm -hmm. um, and what you want to do is you want to count all of the um, insects, good and bad, on the leaf. So you approach the leaf and you'll flip it over um, and you'll mark down everything that you're finding. Okay. What we do is we count three leaves per plant um, and we don't always stay uh, at the leaves at a particular height. So I'm not 16 feet tall so I'm not going to be able to sample the entire uh, bind but I'll try to sample from varying heights so I'll, I'll count a leaf here, then maybe a leaf here, then maybe I'll come to a different string and do a leaf higher up. What I do then is, in the end, average out to get um, an average throughout the entire hop yard, um, and then make any decisions based on the average throughout the hop yard and not just on a single point. So as I scout the hop yard for insects, I'm also scouting for disease. One of the serious diseases in hops we're finding this year is downy mildew. Um, Savannah, what can you tell us about downy mildew in hops? Well, I'll tell you something about the symptoms and then some of the things that we're doing to help um, keep the disease to a minimum. So the symptoms are the chlorosis of the leaves, where they're yellowing, and shortened inner nodes, and then also the leaves will turn down. And something that we're doing in our hop yard, as you can see, is we're stripping the bottom few feet, depending on how tall the vine is. And this will help promote airflow and decrease the downy mildew's ability to attack the plant. Downy mildew is a serious problem, and for more information, please visit our website at UVM Extension in the hops section. There are other pests that you can find in the hop yard, um, some in greater numbers and some in few numbers. One of the really obvious pests is the hop merchant, uh, or eastern comma caterpillar. And the damage basically is it goes through and just eats all of the leaves. Generally the eastern comma caterpillar is not considered uh, an economic uh, concern. Uh, but for more information about the Eastern Kama and all of the other pests in our hop yard, you can read our full scouting report.